Hi, this is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. Today, we will be delving into a fascinating topic, extrapyramidal tracts. So, let's start with quick recap of motor components in central nervous system. As shown in the diagram, motor components not only include primary motor, premotor and supplementary motor cortex, but also somatosensory cortex. Then, basal ganglia, cerebellum, various nuclei in brainstem like red nucleus, vestibular nuclei, reticular nuclei and also the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. So, the higher centers till the brainstem, they regulate the activity of anterior horn cells via various descending tracts. So, descending tracts transmit motor signals from various parts of the brain to the spinal cord and clinically, they are of two types, pyramidal and extrapyramidal tracts. Pyramidal tracts deal with voluntary movements and I have already discussed pyramidal tracts in detail in my earlier video. Link for the same is shared in the description box below and the i card above. Our focus today is on extrapyramidal tracts which are responsible for involuntary subconscious movements. So, in simple words, extrapyramidal tracts are the descending tracts other than pyramidal tracts. Usually, these are complex multisynaptic pathways and are concerned with regulation of muscle tone, posture and equilibrium. They also regulate gross movements in axial limbs and the movements of head, neck and eyes. Parts of CNS like basal ganglia, cerebellum and even sensory areas in the cortex modulate the activity of extrapyramidal system. Understanding the system is crucial for comprehending reflexes, complex movements, locomotion and postural control as well. So, let's begin with the topic. Extrapyramidal tracts include rubrospinal, tectospinal, vestibulospinal, and reticulospinal tracts. Now, if you observe, all these names end with the word spinal. So, in each name, first half indicates origin of the tract and the later half its termination. Being descending tracts, termination is common, which is spinal cord, and hence the suffix spinal. By now, you might have figured out that. Rubrospinal tract originates from red nucleus and terminates in spinal cord. Similarly, tectospinal tract originates from superior colliculi, vestibulospinal tract from vestibular nuclei and reticulospinal tract from reticular formation. All these nuclei are the components of brainstem and hence you can easily remember that extrapyramidal tracts arise from various nuclei in brainstem. Okay, let's study each of these tracts in detail, starting with rubrospinal tract. So, as we have seen just now, rubrospinal tract originates from red nucleus, which is located in midbrain. Fibers immediately cross and descend contralaterally to terminate in anterior horn of the spinal cord. As per the location of neurons in the anterior horn, they are divided into lateral group neurons and medial group neurons. In this representation, here is the anterior horn and the neurons placed in its lateral part form the lateral group of neurons as indicated by blue color. And those of medial aspect shown in orange color form medial group neurons. Usually, lateral group neurons innervate distal muscle groups and hence regulate fine skillful movements, while those of medial group neurons innervate proximal muscle groups and therefore regulate cross movements. Rubrospinal tract terminates in lateral group of neurons in contralateral anterior horn of the spinal cord. Contralateral termination means fibers arising from right side nucleus terminate in the left side of the spinal cord and vice versa. In humans, Rubrospinal tract extends only up to third cervical segment. It is excitatory to flexor muscles of the distal limb. It means it stimulates the activity of flexors of the distal limbs. 
thus it is concerned with regulation of fine skillful activities like that of lateral corticospinal tract next extra pyramidal tract is tectospinal tract which originates from superior colliculi in midbrain these fibers also cross midline and then descend contralaterally they terminate in medial group of neurons in anterior horn of the spinal cord tectospinal tract is concerned with regulation of head movements in response to visual and auditory stimuli now coming to the vestibular spinal tract a complex of four vestibular nuclei is located at the junction of medulla and pons as you can note here this is a complex of vestibular nuclei so this complex includes superior inferior lateral and medial vestibular nucleus on either side these nuclei except the superior vestibular nucleus give rise to medial and lateral vestibular spinal tracts so let's first study medial vestibular spinal tract medial vestibular spinal tract arises from medial and inferior vestibular nuclei these fibers descend bilaterally in the spinal cord that means some fibers descend without crossing and some descend after crossing the fibers terminate in medial group of neurons mainly in cervical cord segment they directly synapse with alpha motor neurons and inhibit muscles of neck and upper back lateral vestibular spinal tract originates from lateral vestibular nucleus which is also known as dieter's nucleus the fibers in this tract descend ipsilaterally in the anterior column of the spinal cord that means this tract is uncrossed these fibers terminate on medial group of neurons in all the segments of the spinal cord so lateral vestibular spinal tract mainly regulates activity of alpha motor neurons and increases tone in anti gravity muscles it is also concerned with postural adjustments to maintain equilibrium now moving on to the last type reticular spinal tract as name suggests this tract originates from reticular formation reticular formation is the interconnecting network of nerve fibers and their cell bodies in the central region of the brain stem as indicated by this red color area traditionally reticular spinal tracts are divided into medial and lateral reticular spinal tracts medial reticular spinal tract originates from medial tegmentum of the pons and medulla and terminate on gamma motor neurons in the spinal cord fibers from pontine tegmentum are excitatory that is they increase muscle tone while fibers from medullary tegmentum are inhibitory that means they decrease muscle tone in contrast lateral reticular spinal tract originates from lateral tegmentum of the pons and they are concerned with modulation of pain sensation as they include fibers of descending pain analgesia system in other way reticular spinal tracts concerned with motor control can be classified as pontine and medullary reticular spinal tracts pontine reticular spinal tract arises from pontine reticular formation and descends ipsilaterally these fibers stimulate gamma motor neurons and increase muscle tone in axial and proximal muscles in contrast medullary reticular spinal tract originates from medullary reticular formation and most of these fibers descend ipsilaterally and they are inhibitory to gamma motor neurons in the spinal cord thus they decrease muscle tone in axial and proximal group of muscles thus reticular spinal tracts are concerned with regulation of muscle tone and posture and also regulation of head and trunk movements in response to external stimuli here is the cross section of the spinal cord showing location of all the descending tracts as you can note here descending tracts occupy lateral and anterior column of the spinal cord and the posterior column does not contain any of the descending tracts functionally descending tracts can be classified based on the location of their termination in the anterior horn and hence the type of their control over the movements the tracts which terminate on lateral group of neurons in the anterior horn of the spinal cord are called lateral pathways 
while those which terminate on the medial group of neurons are medial pathways lateral pathway include lateral corticospinal tract and rubrospinal tract and both are concerned with regulation of fine skillful movements medial pathway include anterior corticospinal reticulospinal vestibulospinal and tectospinal tracts and they are concerned with regulation of tone posture and equilibrium to sum up extrapyramidal tracts are the descending tracts other than pyramidal tracts they arise from various motor nuclei in the brain stem and include rubrospinal tectospinal vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts extrapyramidal system is under control of motor cortex basal ganglia and cerebellum and is concerned with involuntary control of motor activities and regulation of muscle tone posture and equilibrium so that's all for this session thank you for watching and see you in the next session if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video